Do you guys swing? So I can't. Like, I think it's hot if she, like, occasionally, like, fucks other people. Sounds, like, weird, but it's totally not. You have a one-sided open relationship yeah it's called being a cuck it kind of makes you feel like a fucking loser but it sucks because you think it's hot hello what's going on holy shit i'm thinking i'm at the gym right now but uh, obviously i'm picking you up over the gym right now what gym are you at what's the address oh planet fitness of course do they still serve pizza there on fridays nah so actually they have a tin uh, near the entrance with the shittiest candy ever. They either got Tootsie Rolls or like the the like purple Tootsie, the fr- Fruities, I think they're Tootie called. Tootie Fruities? Tootie like Fruities? Yeah, they're, it's weird. We don't get pizza anymore. We just get fucking Tootsie Rolls. Like dentist office so, candy. Uh, What's your name, Tiger? You What's your name, dog? My name, God, this is, I'm just going to drop my... My alias is Blordy, a.k.a. Uh, Slim Diaper on Instagram. <laughs> Slim <laughs> Diaper? Slim Diaper, yeah. What's going on, Slim Diaper? What, uh, what, is it leg Slim. day, arm day? Slim. Slim. Slim? So, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Swim <laughs> Diaper. Yeah, no, nah, it's not leg day, it's not arm day, it's always cardio day. Oh, uh, it's always well, cardio day. Contact. Yeah, so I started popping E, like estrogen, and like Spiro, which like like kills your testosterone and shit. So like I'm kind of like doing that like girl thing. Are you are you yeah. transitioning? Um, I just like to say I'm growing tits. All right. And my hair out. Cool. What? How's yeah. your? Does estrogen grow hair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. I used to be like super jacked, um, and then um, and then my first experience with like a hormone blocker was finasteride. If you know about finasteride, no, so what because is that? my hair was starting to thin at like 22, and um, I got on it, and then I was like, "Damn, like I really want like fucking long, pretty hair, like over muscles." So I kind of switched up, and now I'm going no muscle. With tits and long hair, so. What made you want to grow Bit tits? Um, I don't know. Um, I think I just kind of, like, I could get really deep into it with the whole, like, trans thing. But, like, ultimately, it's, like, if you, like, really want to be, like, feminine, there's, like, kind of one side of things. And if you really want to be masculine, it's kind of another side of things. And I kind of wanted to be the more feminine side of things. Do you view uh, a beautiful long hair to be a feminine trait? Oh, yeah, totally. Totally. I mean, we're, like, designed as dudes to, like, like not have nice hair, you know? We're supposed to have, like, body hair and shit. We're not supposed to have... So, yeah, it's, like, long, pretty hair is, like, totally a chick thing, I feel like, in my head, at least. Um... Well, well, swim. I'm just, I'm just gonna call you swim. Well, swim. Uh, what did you want to <laughs> talk about today? Okay, so, so, um, I am like a very active member in the adult baby community, aka ABDL. I got it tatted on my ass, like hardcore in the shit, hardcore in the scene. And I don't know. We like to go. Like, there's parties all over the country at like. Either it's like a mansion or like a like an Airbnb mansion, and um, it's just a lot of us like cooler, like better to vibe with ABDLs that like are invited, like forty people or so, and um, there's a lot of party favors, and you could probably guess what that is. Experimental party favors too, and we all kind of just like. Every single person is wearing a diaper, like like pissing in diapers, not shit, just pissing in diapers and um, partying. And like, it's kind of like an orgy for like, like a low key orgy. Like, you know, you're playing card games too. You're not just fucking, you know, for like four days. And then a few months later, another one happens. Mm. Do you ever catch any gnarly STDs doing that? <laughs> well so that's like the beauty of beautiful thing about a diaper is it's not always like we're not always like having kind of regular intercourse 
like I don't know. We we all kind of like part of like being an adult baby and like being a, like a diaper fetishist is like you like the feeling of like 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 piss in a diaper, which sounds like so weird, but like it especially feels good on substances. But like swim, I gotta um, tell you, um, that it that sounds like there's an even greater opportunity to pass diseases. Oh, re- really? You think? I mean, I don't know. I think adding piss and shit into the mix is probably uh, going to no make it. No shit, bro. No nah, shit, that is All right, awful, that's where you man. draw your line. That's awful. <laughs> yeah, well, that's just like, think about it, dude. Like, we're regular people, too. If you shit if you shit in a diaper at a party, you're kind of killing the vibe for everybody, you know? What do you, hold on. So, I'm Hold on. I'm so confused. The whole point is that it's an orgy with a bunch of people in diapers pretending to be babies but then if somebody you know what i i just gotta say this if if i were attending one of these parties as a you know like if i were into being a baby and i i would totally feel like it would be a place where i could take a shit in my diaper that's the whole point of the whole point of wearing a diaper is to shit in it that's what a diaper is so what like that's the line is that when a guy shits it's you everyone gets mad at him Dude, so I, maybe this is like a rule that's been like curated through like trial and error because, of course, as an ABDL, like if you ask me, have I shat in a diaper as an adult? Of course I have. Does it like smell like shit? Like in the whole room? Yeah, it's like totally not the vibe. So if you think about it, if you've got like a party of like 40 people and people are like dancing, like some people are, you know, like, eating some candy some people are like i don't know making out like you don't want to automate like all of a sudden like smell like shit you know so i feel like it kills the vibe so i i get where you're coming from but i kind of disagree uh, you know I, I i feel like the lines you draw are arbitrary but i digress um <laughs> where do you uh, how long you been doing this for so I've probably been in the community for like, I don't know, like four or five years. But the thing about like ABDLs is we've all been into this shit, like without knowing each other since basically birth, which sounds weird, but it's like true. It sounds, um, actually, it actually, it makes perfect sense. You were really into being a baby since you were a baby. Wow. I was a, fuck, that's. Damn, I didn't think about it like that. I think, I, I feel right. like I know more about being a baby than you do honestly <laughs> well you have an outside point of view it's a it's a great perspective you have you know i don't get to get this perspective often because i don't tell like regular people you know why don't you tell regular people well i mean think about it you know you're at the bar you know you're meeting uh you, you meet a cute chick or something or whatever and you know you tell her you like those like p- piss and diapers like it probably reduces your chances a little bit so it's kind of one of those things that we keep amongst ourselves because mm-hmm. people get fired from jobs and shit and stuff like that. Like it's, it's better just to keep this shit like private and tucked away. Well, I mean, sh- you know what? I, sure. If you're talking to a girl at a bar and you tell her that you like to piss in a diaper, there's a 99.999% chance that she's going to be turned off by that. But, I'd reduce there's, that there, number a little bit. I'd reduce it there's, like there's a zero point zero zero one percent chance that she's gonna be extremely turned on by it. Damn. Well, see that's this is my thinking actually. I think you're very smart. I think you're onto something and I'm onto the same thing. So I got it tatted the acronym on my ass because if you know you know. If you see the acronym acronym and it means nothing to you it means nothing to you, so I'm one step ahead of you. What's the acronym? Oh, A B D L. Ah, there we go. And it's on your ass yeah. too, so. Yeah, yeah, my uh girlfriend now I guess you could say well, legally my wife, but I call her my girlfriend. I had I had to marry her because I was gonna talk about this too. I had to marry her because uh, we found out her visa was kind of expired. So, where's she from? Uh, Canada. Ah, uh, okay. Is she also a baby person? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. Is that how you met Very her? Very much so. Uh, yeah, yeah, I met her at a convention. Yeah, um, and um, her ex actually saw me and, and thought I was hot and wanted to fuck me, and that's kind of how she came to, like, acknowledge my existence. Do you guys swing? Um, so I can't, but, like, I'm into... Like, I think it's hot, like, if, if she, like, occasionally, like, fucks other people. But, um, it's, I don't know, it sounds, like, weird, but it's totally not. You have a one-sided open relationship. Yeah, it's called being a cuck. <laughs> okay, how long you been into doing that for? Um, well, that's the thing about, like, fetishes is, like, I've probably, like, gotten off to it for like i don't know like eight years now but i like dove in within like the last year or so and it's kind of cool it kind of makes you feel like a fucking loser but it sucks because you think it's hot so uh. well, um it, but isn't feeling like a fucking loser part of the experience yeah it is <laughs> but it's like I, I don't know i explained this to my like my girl is it's like it's kind of like getting spanked or something. Like, because you like it doesn't mean it doesn't also hurt, you know? Hmm. Um, tell me more about being a cuck. Um, so, I, like, begged my chick to, like, get a, um, like, a dating app or something, and uh, what do you know? She's banned from Tinder, so we had to resort to Bumble. And, um, you know, she she got to swipe in, uh, started talking to some dudes, and, like, she's, like, telling me, like, the messages and shit, and I think it's hot. I fucking hate that I think it's hot, but, you know, like, I definitely have definitely jerked off, like, some of the messages before and shit, and that's, I feel so lame doing that. But, so, anyways, yeah, I, um... I've gotten turned on to it and then eventually, you know, it, it ends up happening and actually it, it really pissed me off. Like I felt like a, I felt like a loser, you know, and, and I felt like kind of like she obviously wasn't cheating on me, but it kind of like felt like that in a way. And, um, but at the same time, like I was turned on and I was like, it was like a shitty situation, but then time goes on and all of a sudden you're like, okay, yeah, do you know what? Like, I got over that part. Like, I'm not, I'm not insecure about that part much anymore. Like, I know she wants me. She doesn't want some, like, fucking loser. Like, you know, so. But it hurts at first, being a cuck. It hurts at first. Do you wish that it didn't turn you on? Yeah. 100%, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Hmm. Um... How many times do do when she has like has she when she hooks up with these guys are you in the room with her? Um, nah. So that hasn't happened yet. You got to get some like serious balls to have that happen. Um, I'm like kind of scared of like diving into it too much. Um, it's okay. So hold up, backtrack. It's been over the phone. Like she she's had her phone on and and I've heard like the whole interaction. I want to like see it and stuff but I don't think I could be there. And I think that's just pushing it like too far because like realistically speaking, like it's like a can of worms opening sort of situation, you know? And I don't want to like really fuck up my like sexuality. So it's already so fucking twisted. So what, how do I'm you being feel very like, careful with that. How do you feel like you would fuck up your sexuality? So, I mean, there's kind of like, like having a relationship with somebody and being a cuck like kind of contradicts itself because you want the person like fuck somebody else so like while some people might think like being an abdl is like a lot weirder like i'm more comfortable like diving into that than i am like cuck stuff because i don't want it to like fuck up my relationship but i do think like dipping my toes in a little bit is is preventing me from like diving way too deep and it's also preventing me from like not getting to experience it so it's like a safe medium just have the ever, occasional dick 
Have you ever talked to a therapist about this? Nah, you're the first one. Nah, I, I have not. Where do you think this fetish comes from? The cuck one? Yeah. Or I guess yeah, all of it. So, yeah, so the... Okay, ABDL, it, the, the source is more clear. So um, basically, the, the, this is just kind of like the a, a commonly said thing of, like amongst ABDLs. It's like all the dudes are autistic and all the chicks have BPD. And it kind of holds true. Um, so I think it has something to do with that. It's definitely like a neurodivergent thing. Like you don't get into this shit like being uh neurotypical at all you gotta have you gotta have something like twisted in your mind and like the cuck stuff um one time i like manically got obsessive and like um i like convinced myself that like my ex like cheated on me and then like slowly over time after like thinking about it think about it like hating it hating that um this is like four or five years ago like eventually i started liking the idea <laughs> Yeah, it's very often. It's kind of sad. So I heard the, the dude like three times a, people ago, and I really hope he doesn't hear this. I hope he's not tuning in. But I really hope that doesn't awaken a cuckold fetish for him. But that is like a scenario where like something like that would happen. Um. So your ex cheated on you, and he no, kind he of didn't. I got. Oh. I went. I went mentally manically crazy. I, I had a decent like. If I I could I could pitch to you the manic story, but it's like pointless. But I I convinced myself that she had cheated on me. You convinced yourself that she had cheated on you, and then that awakened within you a fantasy that she did, and then that fantasy yeah. manifested itself as sexually pleasurable. Yeah. Exactly. Hmm. Um. So, I mean, it is, so is your girlfriend, is, so is it, is that true? Is your girlfriend BPD and you're autistic? Uh, like, so <laughs> the thing is, like, obviously everybody's not like this super horrible BPD or, and the dudes are like super horrible, horribly like autistic, but like. The, I do I definitely show like autistic symptoms and does my girl definitely show strong BPD slash autistic symptoms? Yeah, totally. But I guess it's not like like I wasn't in any special classes or some shit. Not to, like this those classes and shit, but I was I wasn't. <laughs> well, look. Everything aside, um, I mean, well, how old are you? I'm 27. Okay. I mean, how are you? Uh, do you like life? Um, honestly, I've had a lot of ups and downs with, with that. Um, like since I was probably like I don't know, like 21. Uh, I got very depressed like for years and shit. But like, kind of rolling with. But ironically, like that was at at that time when I was not really like being true to myself and. Yeah, I would say, like, life has, like, improved a lot, and I feel a lot better about myself, especially even in, like, my vanilla life, just because of the fact that I'm, like, doing these things that I've always wanted to do. So, like, involving myself into, like, ABDL and, like, partying with, like, super cool people that are, like, awesome, and, um, like, getting to experience, like, cuck stuff, all of this, it's, like, it's, like, it's, it's, I don't know, it's been a little, like, I guess, like, pep in my step, you could say, uh, in, like, my vanilla life. So, um, currently, I would say, like, I'm definitely feeling a lot better about my life than, like, I was a couple of years ago, like, a million percent. But um, I would say I'm still a little bit depressed, but so much better. So this stuff has ironically, like, helped a little bit, like, for sure. Yeah, because, I mean, I was going to say, like, um, you know... Societal conventions aside, uh, I feel like these things are a matter of, you know, if if the individual is benefiting from them. And it sounds as though, from everything you've told me, that, um, you know, uh, this stuff has been good for you. 
by your own definition. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. I mean, it's definitely been good for me and um I think like it gets such a bad rep like online, but because like very often like the people that are willing to like to go on the T V shows or like go on to like stuff like this, etc., are like the people that are like crazy because most of the cool ABDLs like have the common sense to like not call in, but like, what do you know? Like, I'm I'm stupid. I'm stupid as shit, but I'm also like cool enough. So like, you're 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 very fortunate to have like a real look through me of like a regular ABDL. There's there's people in ABDL in in very high corporate positions, um, incredibly rich people, incredibly successful people. Like, I would say actually more successful than average. And also, I would say a lot of the people in tech. Very oh, yeah. Tech heavy. I mean, of yeah, course. All the that makes sense. Four chain kids. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, every when you walk down the street, you know, there's like, there's the subconscious and uh, all that stuff. I mean, when you walk down the street, you know, you can just look at someone and they're probably really into you know you walk past yeah at least every day you walk past at least five different people who like getting shat on their chest oh yeah totally without even knowing totally. yeah i think that's beautiful to be honest yeah i mean um I don't know. Yeah, I understand. I, you know, I, I, I mean, this stuff getting hate online, right? Like the cuck stuff and the ABDL stuff. I mean, I, th I think, I'd like to think, most people share the sentiment, socially, politically, whatever. They share the sentiment that human beings should be able to do whatever they want as long as they don't interfere with other human beings ability to also do whatever they want um there's varying yeah. interpretations of what counts as interference you know some people are like oh yeah. well, if you um you know pretend to be a baby you spit in the face of god which is an interference of of you know to me or something like that but mo most people i think don't give a fuck what other people do as long as it doesn't affect them i would i hate to say this one man i hate to say this i disagree with you a little bit because like in my experience like and just seeing comments and kind of like being around this like in this position um you hear that sort of perspective but um and you like hope that's true but then very often people would be like, oh, but that's too fucking weird, man. That's too fucking weird. That, like, that can't be allowed. We, we've pushed the ball too far, shit like that. And it's and it's sad, too, because it's like, um, I don't know, there's a lot of stuff like fighting for acceptance. It's, like, kind of shoved in your face. And, like, ABDO is kind of something that, like, we want it to be behind closed doors. We just don't want, like, we kind of think, like, hey, like, if, if you accidentally find out somehow that like somebody you employ happens to be an abdl although he tried to hide it like it's almost well i think here's what all right well you have a thing you have a th here's the thing with the abdl that you have going strongly against you is that um look obviously i'm sure that everybody in this community is an adult but um yeah. i th i people understandably have reservations about uh you know even if it's two consenting adults reservations about folks who are into like age play like because oh, totally, well I because the no there's no more hated person in the world in than a, a fucking, person yeah. than a person who wants to fuck babies <laughs> yes I, I i'd have to agree with you there i'd have to agree with you there um it is it is kind of an, an unfortunate uh uh thing yeah the position that we've got ourselves in but obviously like i explained like very much so has nothing to do with the other but 
yeah I, there, what are we what am i supposed to do to shake that you know but it's totally all like two adults things if anything most people in avdl are kind of searching for like a little mommy daddy situation and that isn't exactly like an eight-year-old like a mommy Look. like a, a, a mommy's like 32 you know I don't know. I here's I don't I don't know. I don't think you can choose what the fuck g- goes on in your brain, you know? Yeah. You can choose I what agree. you act on and you can choose um what you try to th- think about and stuff, but I don't think you can choose what's going on in your brain. So like, look, if something in your brain wants to fuck your mom, you didn't choose that. <laughs> that's just that's just yeah, what you were born. Yeah. With. But but you as an enlightened 21st century human being make um, the informed decision, which I think is a good one, to not fuck your mom and instead fuck a stranger uh, that is of age and consenting that uh, pretends to be your mom. <laughs> uh, nobody, nobody actually wants to fuck their mom. But I, actually, I understand what you're saying, so I'm gonna totally agree with you. Yeah, but obviously, it goes without saying. Like, we don't actually want to fuck our moms. We just like the position, the dynamic. You know. Um. Yeah. Nobody. <laughs> you knew that, though. I know. I know what you were saying. What that? No, I didn't. I mean, I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I look, oh, bro. There's all. I don't know what's out okay. there. All right. Yeah. I don't know what's out okay. there, and um, all right. But pa- pause. A girl has definitely called you daddy. No hold on. Friend. Since when was any of this about me, Swim? Hey, now, I don't mean to. I don't mean to spin it around. But you have been called daddy. I have also been called daddy. It's just a little stronger, I guess you could say. Well, I think it's about time for us to wrap this up, um, Swim. <laughs> Thanks for uh, swim diaper on Instagram. Swim diaper on Instagram. Yeah. <laughs> see, That's I you know I gotta tell you, you have a lot of because bu- not only are you calling it, you you said something like people are crazy enough to call in, but not only are you calling in, you're like, hey, follow me on Instagram. I mean, go for it. Yeah, it's, it's, stupid, it's yeah. You're not stupid. stupid you're yeah. um, I don't know what you are, but um, I hope <laughs> you have a good rest of your life. Hey man, it was great talking to you. It was, it was great. Good talking to you too, Swim. Is there anything else you want to say to the people of uh, the universe before we go? Yeah, um, uh, fuck bitches and get money. Rock and roll. Have a good one, Swim. Fuck. All right, deuces. Uh, was that conversation too fucked up? Hello? Hello? Hi. Hi. Yeah, who is this? Sorry, I gotta get out of my house. My wife's asleep. What's your name, Bucko? Oh, my name's Simon. Simon, like yeah. uh, one of that's uh, like the chipmunk. Yeah, like the chipmunk. All you right, know, it's kind of fucked. Up. I think Alvin's the youngest, right? And yet he's the front man. Oh shit! Yeah. All right, I'm outside now. All right, well, this should be good. I know you don't give a fuck about any of that or what I just said, so let's talk about you. Oh, I um, do. No, 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 you don't, and you don't have to lie to me, and I'd prefer if you oh. didn't. But, um, and I, I, so I don't give a fuck about what I just said either. None of us do. It's not sacred. Um, uh, that's fair, yeah. Simon! Simon, you yeah, said, you texted me a bunch of things. Let's talk about oh, um, yeah. it's the been first a couple one. Days. Uh, you said to me, let's talk about, I want to talk about a lot of these things, but you, I'll, here's the first one. You said, I want to talk about a fake persona, I assume, on occasion, that has gotten me recognition on a national level. What does that mean? Yeah. So, uh, a couple of years ago, maybe 2017, my wife and I went to a, a business. Uh, it was a comic book store, actually. Worst service ever. Like I walked in, the guy was like, gave me attitude a little bit. Well, not even attitude. He just didn't. He didn't even look us in the eye, or, or like we were new to like the area. So like I was offended, and I, as I was walking out, I was like, you know what? I'm gonna leave this guy a bad review on Google. And so I was like, I don't want to use my real name, you know. So I was like, I'll use the name Simon. So Simon's not my real name, but you know, you you, you probably knew that. So 
So I used the name Simon and I reviewed this place. And then over the years, I progressively just like started reviewing random businesses that I went to, right? And I eventually, uh, over the course of like years, my reviews started getting like more views on, on Google and I would just like copy it and paste it onto Yelp at the same time. So then I was getting recognition on both, right? And Yelp has this like thing, I guess, where like if you like, uh, sorry if it sounds shaky by the way, I, I get anxiety, but uh, they have this thing where like, if you're a top reviewer, they'll like invite you to like events in like the city you're from or like your area. So they started inviting me to like Houston events because I, 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 I'm around Houston. So they're like, uh, you know, this business is opening and uh, we're willing to invite you, but they needed a verified profile, right? But I wasn't going to upload my my face. So like instead of like coming clean, I just like, I just doubled down on the, on the lie. And I went on like an AI generated website and I made like a, I just like generated a, a generic Hispanic guy because I'm Hispanic. And uh, I uploaded that, and I, I, like, got verified, like, kind of in a sketchy way where I just, like, put in a fake phone number, yada, yada, and they start, can't, started sending me invites to all these, like, events in Houston. And I was like, you know, I don't know what to do. So then I, I, like, stopped posting on Yelp, and then on Google, I just kept posting my reviews. And eventually, I got to, like, I don't know, 5 million views a month or something. And then I, I still have this profile, but... uh Basically, Google just constantly reminds me that, like, hey, your reviews are getting more recognition. You should upload more. You should up upload more. And I'm like, man, that's not even me, you know? And then, like, not even, like, just on Google, but, like, in general, when I'm out places and someone asks me for my name, I want to give them my real name. So I just, like, say I'm Simon. And then Simon's more confident, you know? Sorry if I'm, I'm like, the rambling. Is there any, any anything I should be saying? Or... I'm like, is this? Connecting. Why did your reviews go viral? What what is it about them that captured oh, the nation's they're, they're, attention? Oh, they're really they're 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 really detailed. Uh, they for example, uh, I'll upload photos. A lot of people when they review things, they never upload photos. When I go to like places, I'll like take pictures of the menus and and uh, like the surrounding areas and stuff. And a lot of people don't do that. And a lot of my photos are you know really detailed in terms of like I I, I are these the menus are these with, funny huh? reviews or are they like people? Are, uh, no, they, they're very like. They're very, like, uh, detailed, like, everything that's on the menu, if it's affordable, this and that, you know? What What's the uh, worst? And, and you review anything. This is just businesses in general. Yeah, any any place that I just go. All right, give uh, me the worst the, place you've ever reviewed. Like, what's the most scathing review you've ever written? Uh, I think it was a hotel in Mexico that I went to. Why was it so terrible? Uh... <laughs> Uh, well, when we got there, I had to, like, lock up some documents, and, uh, the lady was, like, like, as soon as we walked in, the lady was, like, ah, uh, like, it was a chore, so I was, like, we really need to lock up these documents, like, they're important, right? And then the lady was, like, all right, let me get a manager, so she gets to ma go get the manager, right? And then I wait for, like, 30 minutes to an hour, I don't remember, it was a while, and then they, the manager comes down, and the guy's, like, all right, let's do this, and then they take me to, like, this sketchy back area behind the counter where they have the lock boxes i guess they're like security deposit boxes or something and the guy can't open it and the guy's like it's cool just like hand me the documents <laughs> i was like uh i can't just hand you these like sensitive documents because they're like legal documents and he was like uh okay he's like well i can't give you a lock box and i was like okay well can i get my deposit back and they're like sorry <laughs> and i was like oh okay well what am i gonna do i'm in mexico you know which it wasn't much. It was like, I don't know, 60 pesos or something. And then, uh, like, whenever my, I got to my hotel room, there was nobody else at this hotel, by the way. It was like three floors up. For some reason, they put me, like, on the third floor. And uh, they put me on the one hall that had, like, no lights on in the hallways. Like, the lights were all out. So it made it feel extra sketchy. And I was like, they couldn't have put me, like, on the first floor or something. There's so, nobody else in this hotel. My, so car, Simon, my car was the only one outside. Yeah. Are you, is this your full-time job? No, no, no. I I actually work at a grocery store, which is which is a whole other thing. And how come no, no, you I haven't been able to? How come you haven't been able to monetize this? There's all there's all kinds uh, of like professional douchebag review people who write for magazines and whatever. I think it's uh, more about the it's, it's not it's not under and none of it's under my name, my real name. I don't know how like that affects like like can I run a business without it being my real name? You know, 
but like the legality of it, I guess that would be. I guess I guess that's what Banksy does. He's he's rich. Oh yeah, yeah, I guess so. But I don't um, know. I'm already like, and, and like I can't get involved with shady things because because I'm all, I'm like in the process of getting something fixed. So like if I get involved in shady things, then then that won't come through, you know. What is that? What do you mean? You're in the process of getting something fixed? Well, like I'm getting my uh, my citizenship, and like in order to get my citizenship in the U.S., I had to like go through to get my uh, my permanent residency. But in order to get my permanent residency, I had to like apply are for, you, it for it. Are you order- from Are you from uh-huh. Mexico? Yeah, I am. Yeah, originally. So um, I just got my permanent between, residency. Like between the U.S. and Mexico, uh-huh. as a professional judger of things. Uh, which which place has shittier stuff? Oh man, oh, that's a hard one. Part of me wants to say obviously Mexico, but it's more affordable there. You know, it, it depends. Right. It depends. F- food, food, Mexico obviously wins. Uh, more, uh, genuine leather leather items and uh, like craftsmanship items, I guess Mexico. But like more manufactured and technology items, I would say the U.S. probably. Mm. You know, I have, um, I've always had a great disdain for reviewers, you know. Oh, man. I have, I have, I'm I'm about to go, I'm about to go off on you, Simon. Um, Oh, that's good. I've always had a great disdain for reviewers because, um, you know, all these are like movie review people, art review people, food review people, because, I mean, typically a reviewer, unless if it's like somebody who was in the industry of the thing they're reviewing and contributed to that industry for a while and then comes back with with a particular expertise i'm almost kind of like well shut the fuck up you didn't you didn't do anything you know this at least this person did you know they tried to cook something or they tried to make a movie or a hotel or at least they tried to you know they contributed something you know i mean a review it doesn't really contribute anything is this like a kind of like well like for example if uh if someone cleans your house do you expect their house to be clean or do you just respect the profession that they're cleaning your house If somebody cleans your house do you expect their house to be If somebody cleans my house are you I don't understand what do you you're expect, saying Do you expect their house their personal home to be clean Cuz what you're no, saying is I, the person should be no, no, no. I just I only care if they're able to clean my I guess if I pay somebody to clean my house, I only care if they are able to successfully clean my house. I don't care what's going on with any other aspect of their personal oh. cleanliness. I see, I see. Does that make sense? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I guess I'm like a professional online douchebag in a way. Not intentionally just. Yes, but, but you know not, what? not all not not all. Not all my reviews are scathingly bad, though. I'll but, you throw that out. but you know what, Simon? Yeah. So am I. That's fair. Um, you also okay, so tell me about this. You said I've been working at a grocery store for ten years to get confidence from not being myself. What does that mean? Oh, <laughs> sometimes I'll pretend to be Simon at work <laughs> to be more confident. If that makes any sense. Okay. The person who I am isn't as confident, so sometimes I'll just switch persona. You know, I, I guess like I'll, I'll, I don't know if it's like code switching or what it's called when you just like pretend to be someone else entirely. But I'm like I'm the same person. Why can't I just be myself through that? You know. You know, I will say I'll say this, Simon. I think that uh, give reviewing things is a way to is I can see why you would have more confidence, right? Because it takes a lot of confidence to write a review. To be like, um, you know, to stand up against what you believe to be the injustice of, uh, you know, this noodles and company and the fact that they're. Yeah, I, I have undercooked. renewed a noodle place, yeah. Um, so I, I understand why you would feel more com- more confident as the interviewer. I mean, not as the as the reviewer than as yourself. Why do you feel unconfident as 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 just whatever your real name is? Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I think it's because I've been my, let's say my real name is Alvin. I think I've Ooh, been my whole life. Circle. as Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I've been Alvin my whole life, 
you know, picking up this new mask as Simon. I don't know. It feels like it feels new. It feels like a brand new coat of paint, you know? If that makes any sense. I know what Alvin's like because I've experienced Alvin my whole life. But Simon, Simon's, Simon will tell you what's wrong with you. Simon will, you know, tell you, hey, uh, you need to fix this or, hey, uh, this is how things are. But I don't know. Alvin, I guess, never picked up that skill so, that Simon has, even, even though it's me. So I get where you're coming from, and let's explore this for a second. So uh, Simon, so Alvin is something that just kind of naturally developed. It almost feels as though you didn't pick your personality. It almost feels as though Simon is a blank slate. It's an opportunity for you to create a persona uh, uh, meticulously, intentionally of the kind of person that you wish to embody. Is that accurate? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But He's why can't like, you? But what? But then? But uh-huh. then? Why can't you just treat your existing self? Why can't you just treat Alvin as that slate? Why do you have to create a new character when you can make intentional choices to change the character that you currently inhabit? I don't know. That's a good question. I've never, I've never thought about just being myself, not Simon. But like incorporating, you know. Why don't you add Simon and Alvin together and uh, divide them by two? Salvin and be that person. Salvin. That could work. I feel like uh, I feel like we're I feel like you're about to enter your Salvin era. I think I think so. I think so, guys. Uh, um. Okay, so if what changes would would we make to Alvin to make him uh, more? Simony. I don't know. I guess Simon. Simon's more direct, so I guess Alvin could start being more direct. Like Alvin kind of avoids questions when he's asked at work, and Simon's more like gives you straight answers. You know, like earlier when I was like uh, waiting and whatever in the chat, and someone was like, "Hey, a lot of people got a call to get on," and I just told the guy, I was like. No, I'm getting on. Because that was like, that was Simon Confidence, you know? But Alvin, Alvin doesn't have that. Alvin, let me ask you something. Um, This is a serious question. What do you wish to accomplish or to become that uh, you feel as though you need more confidence to do? Before you get there. I guess. The thing that's. The main thing that's. That would give me the confidence is to. I guess I'm like an action. An action? Uh, an action would be. To leave my job. Oh shit. What do you want to do? I guess be a writer of some sort or a reviewer of some sort. I mean, I already am, but you know, like it's a real thing, not just. So I don't get. So I don't get. So you're like a famous reviewer guy, right? But it's just on Mm -hmm. on how many followers do you have? Uh, let me check. Hold on, I got it right here. It says I have. 610,000 right now. 610,000 on what? On what? Uh, that's just on, on Google. You have 610,000 followers on Google? Yes. Uh, you could you can make you can make as I feel like you can turn that into as much money as you would make working at a grocery store. I don't know how though. I mean, maybe you um that's You know what, I'm what you should do, bro? You maybe maybe you need to start selling t-shirts. <laughs> what would I put in a, a review or a t-shirt? Um, I don't even know. Simon says you suck. Are you are you are you uh are you gonna copyright? Are you gonna like sue me if I use that? Am I gonna no? But I I want you to use that. I, okay. That 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 okay. that is no use to me. It only is used to you. All right. Okay, that works. Wait, if I'm doubling down on Simon and putting it on t-shirts though, 
I'll just put it on the front. Simon says on the front, and then on the back, I'll put like Alvin agrees too, or something like that. And then people. Well, not. Like, I mean, nobody knows who Alvin is. Yeah, that's true. You're right. You're right. It wouldn't make sense. It wouldn't make sense. You're right. You're right. Scrap my scrap who I am. I'll double down on Simon. Okay. And, and then, yeah. That's try and look. Try. I don't know. I feel like you can try to make some money off of this thing. If if you have if yeah. you have people who follow you and um, like what you do, yeah, I think so too. Um, Thanks, Yek. Yeah, for sure, man. I don't know. There's a lot of stuff you can do. You can do fucking YouTube videos. You can do affiliate marketing. Uh, I don't know, man. I, I mean, I just give it a try. If that if that's if that's what um, Simon would do. Is leave his job yeah. to try to be go full time review guy. There's 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 all kinds of uh, douchey internet review guys that make a a ton of money um, saying that things suck. Why yeah, not yeah, you? Yeah. Why not you, Alvin? Why not you? That's all I'm saying. Why not me? Yeah, I'll do that. I probably won't quit my job because I'm about to go to Mexico, but soon. When you go, you should get some tostadas. Dude, no, I just, I just get those at my house. Uh, I'll look for something that I can't make at my house and get it and get it. Alvin, yeah, Salvin, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Yeah, actually, uh, don't let where you come from define who you are. Where can I follow you on? How do I follow you? Uh, on Google. Yeah. I'm not gonna say it. Cause I don't want to dox myself. Cause I'm using fake identity. Uh, I'll, I'll. You can't. You can't follow me. <laughs> All right. Well, your fake identity is oh. the same, but you. But you're not. It's, it's not a fake. You're the fake identity that you're giving me right now is the same as the fake identity that you have on that account. So, where's the compromisation here? Uh, cause it it, cause since I you review a lot of local businesses around me. I don't know if you've ever seen like Dateline and stuff when they find mass murders or killers or whatever. They like find out which businesses they've uh, like where they've killed people and they like triangulate that guy's location. Does that make are any you, sense? Are you saying that you've killed people? No, no, no. But I'm afraid that if someone could like triangulate the businesses where I've been and then like narrow it down to like, I don't know, my house or something. <laughs> uh, I'm not going to sue you for the idea, but if you do make a t-shirt, you need to send me one. I will. Beautiful. I will. I'll make sure you get one, Gek. Hey, take care, Simon. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Gek. I'm pretty sure that guy just told us that he killed someone. Hello? 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 Who is this? Hello? Hey, what's up, man? Hey. Is this Matthew? Yeah. What's going on? How much? All right. Well, is there anything else you want to say to the people at the computer before we go? Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Hi. Yes, this is Matthew. Hey, what's up, Matthew? Uh, Matthew, <laughs> Not much. you are you are you? <laughs> I where, I feel like I caught you like I feel like you were talking to me in your sleep just now. <laughs> I was lying down. I just saw like a weird number. I'm like, it's a spam. What is this? Oh, okay. I usually All right. don't like second. answer. Yeah, right, right. I've been doing this thing where people just text my line and I'll call them back. Oh and I, I'm, you know, it's a, it's just they just get a phone call from a random number. Yes. Hi. It's the guy. Hey. Matthew, 30, you texted yeah. me and I called you I because did. you said to me, yeah. I am a new railroader and the lifestyle yeah. is interesting. It is very interesting. What is a new railroader? What does that mean? So basically, um, last December, um, I went to a train school uh, where they basically put you up and teach you how to work on the railway. And then... Uh, I spent like six months in training, and then now I'm out there on my own doing railway stuff. Wow. You yeah. mastered in trains. Yeah. No, well, I guess. Okay. I What's guess. it like making trains? Uh, well, I am, I don't make trains. I'm a conductor. So what I do is like I uh, build certain trains, 
um, like they'll give me paperwork and tell me stuff I'm going to do. It's like sort of like it's basically like a rail trucker in some cases or like a FedEx driver on rails. It just depends what I'm going to be doing that day. Can I, you know, be honest with you about how I feel about trains? Go ahead. Go ahead. We have cars that can go yeah. lots of places. Why do we yeah. still use trains? Quantity. Quantity. I guess there's no traffic on trains, really. Well, you have to know, but yeah, a lot of it's quantity and a lot of it's infrastructure because you can carry a lot more uh, in certain areas that you just can't do with trucks. No, that's pretty much what it is. But mm -hmm. side by side, they really work together. It's pretty decent, I guess. I don't know. It's a, it's a fun job. Mm -hmm. Now tell me, do people ever stow away on the trains and you have to kick them out? So I haven't caught anyone, but uh, it is a thing that happens. So there's a guy on YouTube, apparently, is a, is a homeless dude, and all he does is just, like, hop on our trains and record his adventures and stuff. Someone sent me one of his videos a while ago. But... You know, eventually that guy's going to start making big YouTube money, and his train videos are going to – he's going to be hopping on Amtrak's instead of, like, um, I hope he you does. know, uh, commercial trains. Yeah. I'll get that money. That's see that's a that's a that's a double edged sword right there, having a popular YouTube channel about <laughs> being homeless. Because no, what do you uh, because if the YouTube channel gets popular you're gonna start making money and you won't be homeless anymore, but people watch the videos because you were homeless. Yeah. Yeah. But you never have to worry about that. Because you make trains, uh, not YouTube videos. <laughs> I can do both, but not really. And if you ever did lose your home, you could make a train and live in that. Yeah. Matthew, have I caught you? I feel like I've caught you in the middle of having an affair on your <laughs> wife or something. You seem very. You seem like. You seem. I was. I was lying in bed about to fall asleep. So if okay. I sound disoriented, it's probably because I am. That's um, okay. Do you want me to? I, by the way, I, I'm not offended at all. If you would rather be asleep than talk to me, I, I genuinely. No, no, don't. it's. it's it's fine. I'm uh, so right now. I'm at the part of the job. It's like so. They basically, I take a train from one place to a certain place. So I'm at the certain place in a hotel, waiting for a call to be sent back home. Basically, so it's like I'm in like some sort of like limbo, like purgatory, waiting to go home. So I'm actually still up because I really don't want to fall asleep, so that I'm not groggy when they call me to take a train back home. Mm. Oh, wait, so you don't want to be asleep. Right right now, no. I'm kind of hoping they call me like the next two hours, but they can honestly call okay. me in between. Like, I can be here for like another 24 hours or 30 hours. If they called honest. you right now, would you have to hang up on me or would you hang up on them? <sighs> they don't like it when we don't pick up the phone. So I'd probably put you on hold. If you put me on hold, I would unfortunately probably end the call. Oh, that's fair. Unless if you wanted to like if I how about this? Can we make it can we make a deal? If they call you <laughs> if they call you, you act you you just put them in on this call and I promise I won't like say anything. I just wanna listen. Honestly, um that makes me incredibly uncomfortable, so I would probably just risk you just not calling me. Yeah. I, you know what? That's what I would do too if I asked if I were you and I asked you that. Um, what kind of snacks do they have on on tra on these trains that you're making? Do they have a snack Nothing. cart? What whatever whatever we bring. Um, they have the like uh, vending machines and like the little offices we go to to get our paperwork mm -hmm. and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. I brought a bag of like soups and protein bars and trail mix and sandwiches and rice and tuna that's really lame the one thing that america does wrong that uh australia and europe does very well is the snack carts on trains you know america america oh. if you're listening you need to get a good snack cart installed in a train so that this guy can you know have a nice hot bacon egg and cheese instead of his tuna sandwich from home you know what's funny i gotta I got hang up now because they're calling me Oh, shit. Well, good talking to you, man. <laughs> yeah, thanks for calling. Bye. Later.
I hope he gets a promotion to airplanes. Yeah.